Hello my beautiful crafty friends, I am Katya with Lunar Sun Creations and today I am going to give you a whole bunch of tips and tricks and ideas for batch making cards. So we're going to get right into it with uh, number one which is to pre-cut all of your card bases. So cut and score and fold all of your card bases and have a whole bunch on hand. I have an entire drawer of card bases and panels that I can just reach for so that makes it really quick and easy. The second tip is to print your entire stamp when it has multiple stamps. So when you have some a stamp that has a whole bunch of sentiments on it, stamp the whole thing and then you can cut them out later. I do this with many, many stamps. Well, pretty much every one of my stamp sets I get it and I just stamp it a few times and then you can cut them out later and it is a huge time saver. Tip number three is after you've stamped everything, put adhesive on the entire back of it. So either with an adhesive sheet or with one of these wide rolls of adhesive and then you can just cut it out and stick it onto your card base. A little bonus tip is if you do not have nylon coated scissors, the non-stick scissors, then a really great way to save your scissors from getting all sticky when cutting rolls of adhesive is to cut just the tiniest bit into the cardstock itself. I mean like just a sliver but it makes it so there's still like a sliver of paper on the edge here. I don't even know if you can see that but it makes it so that it is so so much easier to trim trim these off uh, afterwards. Tip number four is when you're cutting uh, die cuts, fill up your entire plate and cut as many as you can at a time. Um, I have all of these again with the adhesive on the back and I've got a ton of them pre-cut so then all I have to do is uh, put them on my card. And when they have the adhesive on the back, it makes it much easier to ink things up when they are on an adhesive sheet as opposed to having to hold a tiny little piece and ink it. And I do the same thing for background die cuts and um, panels and all that kind of stuff. So I, you cut them out multiple times with the adhesive on the back and then I keep them all in this um, binder with these uh, photo sheets. Okay, so then I just have to grab this binder and I've got tons of things cut out. Tip five is to just spend a day making tons of backgrounds. I love making backgrounds. It's one of my favorite things to do and I have probably a couple hundred different kinds of backgrounds using different techniques. So just make tons of backgrounds that you can use in your card making and then all you have to do is cut them down to size and you have all these ready-made pieces that you can use. Uh, tip six is to use pattern paper. There's so many paper collections that have these kind of cut aparts that are perfect for card panels. Um, things don't have to get overly complicated. You can make simple cards and still have them be beautiful. These ones are all from Heartfelt Creations, a couple different collections. And then these ones here are from my own latest uh, paper collection with my acrylic pores. This is available in my Etsy shop now. Um, if you want the full video of all of the papers that came in this collection, I'll link the video up here and down below. But I'm just going to cut these out and then we'll assembly line a whole bunch of cards. And that brings me to my next tip, which is to form an assembly line. So get out all your card bases and get your pieces organized that you're going to put onto your cards. All right, so just attach your panels to your card base using whatever adhesive you so desire. 
And that only took me a couple minutes and I've got eight card bases ready to go. Which brings me to my next tip, which is uh, using pre-made sentiment strips. So if you don't feel like either stamping or die cutting out a sentiment, then you can just use a, um, a sentiment strip or use one of these kinds of, um, these ones aren't adhesive on the back, but they have so many different variations. I think we overcomplicate cards oftentimes, so I think because the backgrounds are so busy, they don't need a huge amount of extra pomp on them. So I think I'm just going to put a few of these on black cardstock and then put them onto uh, my cards. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of those sentiment strips on a piece of black cardstock. I'm going to use some large foam mounting squares and just put them all over the entire back of this and then cut them out. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut them all into strips and then put them on the cards in no particular order. A little bonus tip for you. If you have a piece that has, you can just see a little bit of the foam tape peeking out. If it's on a black cardstock background, just use an ink dauber and some ink to color the edge of the foam and then it is barely visible. You can make them fancier if you want to, but um, I feel like these are just awesome the way they are. Now all of these cards kind of had um, a built-in background with the border that I created, but for cards that do not have a background already, like for instance when you're using patterned paper like this. Tip number, what are we at, nine? Is to pre-cut a whole bunch of colored cardstock background panels for matting. A bonus tip to go with that is to keep all of your scraps of paper in little zippered pouches I've got all of mine um, kind of sorted to color family and that way you don't have to go digging around in a huge pile of scraps to find a piece that you can use as a card panel. Okay, so again I'm going to assembly line these ones. So I've kind of planned out what it is I'm going to do. A lot of batch making cards is, is uh, very much about just kind of figuring out ahead of time what you want to do and then it becomes very, very fast. So put the colored base on, then patterned paper on, and then um, a sentiment. Okay, so all of these are going to be put together the same way. So I've got two of them already done. The rest of them have their um, cardstock panel on top, their layering panel. Now I'm just going to put these on and then slap a sentiment on and bada bing bada boom we have some more cards. So tip number 10 is to use stickers. They are so easy to use. Just grab a background, cut it to size and slap some stickers on there. And the stickers that are out nowadays are so gorgeous. This entire pile are all from the Dollar Tree. They're just from the dollar stores, so very, very accessible. Okay, so backgrounds with some stickers on top. Okay, so here are the eight panels with stickers on them now. This is all I've done is add stickers over top of the backgrounds. Now I'm just going to add a bunch of sentiments from my um, pre-stamped 
sentiments over here in my binder, of which I have a kajillion. So I'm going to add some of those, and uh, then I will show you in detail all of the finished results. Okay, so let me show you all the cards that we made. So these ones, they're all pretty much the same. They're just the acrylic pour paper collection that I have in my Etsy shop with a sentiment strip. Um, I did want to read you some of the sentiments though because they're from the snarky small talk. Um, this one says, life is not a fairy tale. If you lose a shoe at midnight, you're drunk. <laughs> um, I'd like to announce I have no idea what I'm doing. That's me a lot of the time. I meant to behave, but there are too many other options. If it requires pants or a bra, it's not happening today. That's also me. Which is why you don't always see me in front of the camera. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that eight cards. And then we've got the ones that we did with pattern paper. So for these, I just added some glossy accents because I just love the glossy accents. It just adds so much to the card. And I put a little bit on the peacock there and just popped up a sentiment and did some border strips on this one. Um, this one I just added some glossy accents to the border and to the outside of the paisley. Don't know if that's... there we go, picking it up a little bit. Just adds a little extra dimension. And then there's this one here that you saw. I just, again, added a little bit of glossy accents to it. And then on this one, I just added Posca paint pen dots all the way around the outside, just to kind of mimic the scallop and the gemstones in that. Okay, so those are those ones. And then these ones. So this is the last one that you saw me finish. I played around with the way the flowers were many times. Oh, I forgot to add, I wanted to add black centers to those. I'm still gonna add black little dots to those. So that one's not quite done. This one was the easiest ever. This entire thing was just um, a few different stickers that I layered and then a wedding wishes right there. On this one here, I just drew a little kind of zentangle kind of border around it and I wanted the the lines are a little bit askew but that's kind of what I wanted I didn't want them to be uber straight it says don't look back you're not going that way and then the background on this one was really pretty and I liked it a lot so I didn't want to mess with this one not every single card has to have a sentiment I just liked this one the way it was and then this one you also saw me make it's just a metallic background that's been embossed and then these are all stickers and a sentiment. So pretty though, right? And then this one is kind of like a Moroccan vibe chipboard sticker and then some butterflies and gemstones. These two are both with these kind of like tile mosaic stickers and I absolutely loved these, I have so many of these tile stickers. They're just fantastic. And I mean, I love this card. It's not my usual color palette, which I think is why I love it so much. I'm usually going towards the blues and the greens. But I also love this one. And this, the background is just, I just rubbed some ink over top. I think it was the blueprint sketch, possibly. Ink on there, and that's about it. And then this one, 
I tried to do another border, but the reason that I was doing the border was because I got a bunch of ink up here that I didn't want, so I tried to create a funky border to hide the ink. It kind of turned out. I just wish I'd stopped with the border and not did it right here as well. I think that kind of takes away from it, but you know, live and learn. It is what it is. Those balloon stickers are so pretty though. I really like them. All right. So those are all of our cards from today. So I mean, I made all of these within just a few hours and I hummed and hawed about a lot of them. So you could definitely do it a lot faster. And you can make them fancier or less fancy, whatever you so desire. But I hope those tips and tricks helped you out a little bit. If none of them were new to you, then congratulations, you are a crafting genius. <laughs> if you haven't yet pressed that subscribe button, I would super appreciate it if you would. You could also boop the little notification bell and that way you'll know whenever I post a video. Please let me know which one of these was your favorite favorite in the comments below. All right, I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you again very, very soon. Sending you huge hugs. Bye.